I want to share with you a project um, that's occurring between the Natural History Survey and the Department of Natural Resources, and that's the reintroduction of a federally endangered mussel. Uh, collaborators for the DNR include um, Bob Safoni and Joe Kath and Kevin Cummings with the Natural History. The northern ripple shell is federally endangered. It historically occurred um, in Illinois, in the Vermilion River system of the Wabash, to the Allegheny River system of uh, southern New York, northern Pennsylvania, from Detroit down to Kentucky of the Green River um, and Elk River of West Virginia. Within the last 100, 150 years, it has experienced about a 95% range reduction. There are only two reproducing populations now, uh, the Allegheny in Pennsylvania, in addition to a population in Ohio. All those other red dots are essentially functionally extirpated species, that is, old individuals that are not reproducing. The reason for the decline are the usual suspects for aquatic ecosystems. You have dam siltation, pollutions. Um, all of these are known to cause um, species to decline, whether it be fishes, aquatic uh, insects, things of that nature. So we set out an objective of, to establish a uh, population in the Vermilion River system of the Wabash. And this was written in the recovery plan for the, the mussel. Um, when a species is listed, it has to have a recovery plan, steps you need to take to get the species delisted. And so our objectives, our specific game plan, was to select sites based upon suitable habitats in addition to fish hosts. And, that, and as Allison alluded to, um, mussels need a fish to reproduce. Some species can use multiple fishes, others, such as a northern ripple shell, can only use one or two species. And for the northern ripple shell, it uses the orange throat darter and the blue breast darter. So our first step was to do fish surveys. And so we went out and we sampled about 42 sites in the Vermilion River Basin. And we had about 24 sites that we deemed good. Um, these had high densities of the host fish. We went back to those 24 sites and sampled freshwater mussels. We wanted to put this mussel back into the best areas. We wanted to find areas that had a high, diverse mollusk assemblage. So we narrowed it down to about 16. Then the next step is where DNR came into play. And they started making calls. Um, they wanted to, to put this in some sort of protected area, whether it be a, a county forest preserve park, a state park, or um, Farmer Joe, who is interested in helping restore native species. So after making calls, we ultimately decided upon two sites. We, um, the first site is in the Middle Fork, which is the North Star. Um, it's a property owned by the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. And the Southern Star is in the Salt Fork, and it's a property owned by the U of I. So that leads us up to about 2010. In the summer of 2010, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service went to the Allegheny River, collected 150 animals, and gave them to us. Underneath this bridge on the Allegheny are about 50,000 endangered mussels, and they're going to drop that. So they want to try to find a home for these mussels. And so they used us as kind of a guinea pig. Um, and so we brought these mussels. We put a pit tag on them. A pit tag is a passive integrative transponder tag. It just allows uh, monitoring. It's a little radio frequency you can send out. So we put pit tags on 150 mussels and stuck them in the substrate and started monitoring. We monitored about seasonally 2010, 2011. Monitoring is relatively simple. You have a pit tag reader, which looks like a metal detector. You sweep it over the substrate. You have snorkels, snorkelers in the water to see if these things are at the surface or not, and you have people recording data. Uh, we really didn't have a way to judge our, our success. We detected about half of them, and we had a survivorship of about 80%. Um, Ohio is doing a similar project. They're not assessing the survivorship, but they did detect about half of them, so we're right on par with them. Um, this was good enough for the Fish and Wildlife Service, so they signed off. And this past summer, we went out to the Allegheny River, and we brought back 1,000 more club shells in addition to 200, or 1,000 more riffle shells in addition to 200 club shells, which is a second endangered mussel. Uh, we put a newer style pit tag. Detectability range is a little bit greater. It goes, the old style tag has about five inches, our new style is about nine inches. And so the detectability, we were able to detect about 65%. But unfortunately, we went out about a week after the only rains from the summer, and the discharge was too high to sample. Uh, this process, we've received a lot of local love from the press. So we were on TV. Um, we were on the front page of the Gazette. We were newspapers in Pennsylvania and Ohio. So I guess, you know, press is good for us, especially when you're working with an endangered mussel. Future plans for the state of Illinois. Um, we may translocate more mussels. As I said, there are a lot of mussels underneath this, this bridge. Um, Fish and Wildlife Service is willing to work with us and the species are being propagated in hatcheries. So uh, if the hatchery system have enough to give us, we're gonna move them. The bigger picture, grand scheme of things uh, for the northern riffle shell, um, as I mentioned, there are 20,000 northern riffle shells underneath this bridge. Um, they gotta find a home. So Fish and Wildlife has agreed to, to move them elsewhere. Um, they've been moved to Ohio, Illinois, Kentucky. They were just moved to West Virginia this year. And sadly, a river otter came and ate over half of them um, within a week. 
So we don't have to deal with that. Um, and then the state of Indiana is being considered, uh, they're just starting the process. So with any luck, um, by the time I retire, we can get the species delisted.